Thank you. Dear friends and colleagues, it's a real pleasure to be here. And indeed, I want to instill some realism in what we've been talking about. I'm going to talk as an engineer and as a biologist, not because I believe science is the answer to everything, but I do believe that science sort of provides the framework of the possible. It's up to society and to politics to take the decisions, but science can tell you what to do, what is possible. And what is possible is a lot of good news in the decades to come. If you want to remember one word from my talk, remember the word smart food systems. Very rapidly, our systems are becoming smart. And this is not just a matter of something for us here in developed countries. In fact, it's going to be there everywhere, from the poor farmers in India, the poor fishermen in the Philippines, to everybody around here. And I will tell you why. Just imagine you are a small farmer, say, in Tanzania. You are a woman who still works her land with a hoe. She has no idea whether there will be fertilizer, whether her soil actually needs fertilizer, whether the seed she's using is going to be of any viability. That will change, and it changes very rapidly. We now have something, a health, handheld device, as big as your telephone or even smaller, that you can actually apply to the soil, and it tells you immediately whether your soil is diseased, with some fungus disease, whether it needs actually water, whether it needs some essential minerals and elements like nitrogen. This is now so cheap that it can actually be made available to most farm villages where there is an internet connection. And through that device, she can get immediately, or nearly immediately, all the details she knows about her soil. And that gives her the room to actually buy the fertilizer that she needs, and no more and no less. And if you take that in combination with a way to combine your efforts with other farmers and maybe get some vouchers to actually buy some implements, you see a whole new world. Farming is about the small and the local and the beautiful, but it's also about organizing and getting the right scale. And what this woman needs is different implements. She doesn't need to work by hand because there's no more back-breaking work than working the land by hand. What we need very, very soon is some kind of smart mechanization that allows her children also to want to be farmers instead of moving to the city. That's one. Take a farmer here in southern Sweden, a dairy farmer, who already has his cows ni neatly lined up. And already, if he's smart and advanced, he will have the robotics needed to milk the cows. You may think he's advanced enough to be smart, but no way. He, or preferably she as well, will move very rapidly to a robotic system that measures about everything about his milk, not just whether the, the cow is diseased, but what the optimum feed ratio is. And even more importantly, it looks at very great details in the composition, so that the output of that farm is not just milk, but it's going to be enzymes and all kinds of ingredients for a future chemical industry based on bio-based materials. And he will be part of a cooperative perhaps or probably, that actually will become a chemical industry and not just a food industry. Not because the chemicals in themselves are important, but because there will be ingredients into a future food system that will be tailor-made and link a farmer and a consumer in a much more direct way. And if it's good, the milk you will buy from this farmer or the enzymes or the proteins will actually carry a little labor or something through which you can actually see where your farm comes from. Because that brings me down to the consumer. The consumer today, and not just here in our affluent countries in the middle class, increasingly wants to know where his or her food comes from. Not just from the farm, and exactly identify that farm, but also in terms of the quality, the additions, and so on. And reading a label, as you know, is very complicated. But looking it up on the internet, or getting an idea of what is exactly needed for you. Getting a smart fridge that tells you, hey, you haven't been eating carrots for a while, maybe it's time to order some carrots, and just press a button and here the carrots will come from your local supermarket. It changes everything. And this is available right now. So what is the future of food systems? It's not only going to be the link between the food system and robotics and information technology. And I jokingly sometimes talk about the Internet of Pigs, 
you know, every single pig will be linked into a system, as every single cow or rabbit or even maize field. No, the future of food is going to be about a couple of new things, and it's the frontier design that we're working on right now. We're going to have to look at other species. Protein is still going to be the major challenge because we still have to feed those two billion extra and all those who do not get enough protein. But the protein doesn't need to come from the sources that we know now. Yes, there will be always a sizable part of protein coming from animal sources. Fish, increasingly, meat, a little bit less, certainly red meat. That the whole reason for that is not because we are only carnivores, but also because animals like cows, like goats, and so on, so those that we call polygastrics, can actually um, eat some of the material from the land that we humans cannot digest. In other words, those animals are an essential way to use land that we cannot use otherwise. The wetlands of many parts of this world cannot sustain crops. The inner lands of Mongolia cannot sustain crops, but they can sustain animals, and it's a very good way, way biologically speaking, to do that. But we will increasingly look for proteins to new sources. Indeed, the ocean sources, the lower types of, of the species in the food chain, think of algae, think of polycells, some sort of small organisms, fungi, and so on and so forth. Our future will not necessarily be warm-blooded -blood animals to eat. And in fact, these animals, these bacteria and so on, can be used increasingly in this chemicalization, if you may say, of the food chain. We will use more and more of those species. So species will be different. But there's one other very important part that comes with the, the robotization and the tracing of food chains in their totality. And that is we will monitor much more clearly what is waste and what type of waste can be used and reused. What can we do? We can now use all the waste that we produced as an ingredient in a new system. So think about using the sewage to really still take away the minerals and the proteins from our own sewage system in cities and relaunch them, possibly as feed into the animal food chain. There are enormous possibilities. And I'd like you to think about food and agriculture of the future as a land of possibilities. We need to decide collectively what we want and what is necessary and what is acceptable today. But as nobody could have imagined how the smartphone changed our lives, I think smart agriculture and smart food will change our lives, and not just ours as the middle classes, but also those of poor farmers and poor consumers in developing countries. Thank you very much.